Hi, I'm Tracy. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I love to upcycle clothes and turn thrifted items into fun, edgy pieces. And this started as just a simple nightgown from Goodwill. And I'm going to show you how I created this look. Now, I won't say this will be like a seamstress or a tailoring type tutorial. It's more artsy. You'll have your own gown. You'll have your own laces. It's more of a step-by-step -step of how I do the layering and sort of how I create this look. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the gown I'm starting with. It's just a thrifted, 100% cotton, kind of a pale pink, dingy gown. Has a little hole in it, but um, we're gonna jazz it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my yardstick and I am going to sort of measure the back from the bottom of the dress to where I want it to hit. And I don't want mine to go below my ankles. So I measured 18 inches. That's a measurement I'll just need to know throughout the whole thing. I don't want to go longer than 18 inches on anything. So this has a little slit in the side. I want a high low design, shorter in front and longer in back. So I'll just take this little slit and cut across to the other side, but I'll show you how I do that. Plus that'll get rid of that little hole. Problem solved. Okay, so I have my gown laid out and the first thing I want to do is cut off the collar. And I will cut it above the seam line there. If I cut below, I start sort of deconstructing the dress and I don't want to do that. I only want to cut the collar off at the top of that line. And I will lose my tags. And you know, it's nice to have tags if you're reselling, but I'm not, so I can go ahead and lose those. So I will just cut the collar off. And I'll go all the way around. So once I have the collar cut off, I'm coming down to the bottom to work and I folded this in half, lining up the side seams. So this is actually the front of the dress and this is the back. And so I'm doing this because I, like I said, I want a high low design and I am just going to cut off part of the front here. I want it to start in the front and arch a little bit down to that split I have. Not a whole lot because I don't want a ton cut off the front. So these are lined up at the bottom. I'm not going to do any measuring. I'll just start cutting. Okay, I'll save this piece for later. I'm sure it'll come in handy. And now, I have it shorter in front and longer in back. Okay, so now that we got the bottom cut off, I want to make a nice flared sleeve. So I need to cut part of the sleeve off so that I can add the shape that I want. And I'm not going to measure or anything. I didn't measure for you, but I want it about, I don't know, from the top seam, I came down about six inches and then I'm just going to cut straight across. These arms are lined up perfectly so I feel pretty comfortable not measuring or doing sleeves separately so I just went ahead to cut them off. Now I liked the length of the sleeve of this dress so this what I cut off is 13 inches. I'll use that measurement when I cut the next portion of the sleeve, then I know it's going to be the right length. Okay, so here's what we have after doing some cutting. We have the short sleeves and a high-low design and the collar cut off. Now, I want to add big sleeves and I want to add a big ruffle at the bottom, but I will do that towards the end because I have a lot of work I want to do on this, and if I add all that fabric, 
I'm really going to have a hard time working with it in the machine and everything. So I'll just make life easier on myself and start working on this area. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, of course, we're going to have a big ruffle down, a decorative ruffle down at the bottom. But I want to add layers. So I want to do a piece of lace that goes all the way around. Or it's a crochet tablecloth I'll show you in a second. But I measured all the way around and taking this dip into consideration and I got about 58 inches. So on mine, I am going to go about 90 inches long on the lace that I cut that I'll wrap around because I wanna pleat it as I go just a little bit to give it a little dimension. And then I'm going to cut it about 10 inches tall and I will sew it about here. Mine has scallops at the bottom, so they'll go overlap this line a little bit, and I'll make that more clear in a second. But basically, I'm cutting it 10 inches tall and about 90 inches long. And this is what I have, this beautiful crochet blanket I got at an antique mall. And see, it has scallops at the bottom, so I don't have to even do anything there. That's so pretty. And so I'll cut 10 inches off, which is about at, here's one flower, it's about at the second flower here. And I'll cut about 90 inches long. Then I'll show you what I do. I have my lace all cut, and here's the bottom of my dress in the front, and then the bottom in the back. And I'm just kind of laying this on here to show you. So here's the front. I am letting my flowers just dip over that edge a little bit. And as I'm putting it through my sheen, I am just watching it just to make sure these flowers. I don't do a lot of measuring and pinning when I make kind of crazy dresses like this. But so to make it go over the edge a little bit here, I have to sew it up here. And so I will start by putting my lace and the dress in the machine, putting the needle in, and I start in sort of an inconspicuous spot like the side, and I'll come, you know, I'll just feed it through my machine, and I'll just do a teeny bit of pleating as I go. I don't want like a big childish sort of ruffle, but I do want some dimension, so I'll just kind of pleat that, pinch pleat it a little bit, run my sheen over it, Come down here a little ways, do another pinch pleat. That way it's not just laying flat against the dress, but yet we don't have this big ruffle with tons of volume. So you just kind of feel yours out. Maybe you like a big fluffy ruffle, but so I'll go to my machine and I'll get that started. Okay, so I took the front plate off of my sewing machine and I'm using purple thread because I'm going to dye this purple. And if your thread is 100% cotton, it won't dye. I'm trying to use all 100% cotton or high cotton, cotton content um, so that it'll dye nice with the rip dye. And I slit this in through the neck hole. That way I can see what's going on down here at the bottom. Now we've got this high-low design and my lace, I'll follow along that design or that shape. And so I went to a side seam and I found the end of my lace and I'm just going to start kind of looking at it at the bottom here because I want just the tip of those flowers to overlap that bottom a little bit. So. I'll just sew along and take my time and just kind of watch that. And I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. I almost always do with lace. Okay, so I went a couple inches and now I'm just going to pleat it a little bit, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch, something like that. So over that pleat and then I just kind of readjust and take a look at it 
and make sure my flowers are falling right over that little edge I have here. You know, this is just kind of artsy. Your lace is going to do something different than mine. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'm really good about checking my comments and answering any questions or comments that you have. Um, I know this can be kind of complicated, but I think it's it's not complicated to do. It's really an easy project, but it's hard to explain. <laughs> so please feel free to comment any questions you might have. So here's what that looks like. And it's not perfect. And I don't want it to be. If I stressed about it being perfectly symmetrical, it wouldn't turn out really cool and kind of um, tattered, grungy looking. And that's the look I love. Came around the back. Now these corners, see this is the corner of my tablecloth right here. Now it'll hang lower. And I love that. I don't want everything to be perfect. So that's what we have so far. And I'll show you what I do next. Okay, so we're looking at the back of the dress here. And there's a lot of space here that's just kind of blank. And what I want to do is I have this table runner. It's really pretty. It's linen and just kind of has some lace at the end. And I'm going to cut it in half. And then I will take one half and I'll just lay it in sort of a diamond pattern on the back. I know it's really hard to see this white on white, but I'll get that pinned on and then I'll put it back on my mannequin and give you a, a better idea of how this will look and how I place it. Can you see where I have it pinned on here? It's kind of hard to see with white on white. And this is sort of a rectangle, so it's not perfectly symmetrical and that's okay. Um, quick tip when you're pinning something on like this, weave, like when you're pinning lace, weave your pin in and out a little bit because these will fall out of lace pretty easily. So a lot of times I weave it in a couple times. And then also if I'm laying it flat on my table and pinning it, I slide like a cardboard in between the front and back layers or like a cutting mat. Then you can pin a lot easier without catching the fabric on the front. Now I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to sew this. And I will just do a smallish straight stitch. I won't zigzag this one because it's a pretty nice lace. It's not, you know, has the big gaps and stuff. So I'll just sew that along the edge. And then when you have something this large that you're sewing on, after you wash it and dry it, it will tend to gape out. So what I do when I have something large like this is I'll go back in, and it depends on the shape of your lace, of course, but I'll go back in sort of towards the center, and I'll just make another diamond. I won't draw it out or anything, but that keeps that adhered. That way it won't bubble out or gape out after you wash it. So I'll go to the machine, and I'll get that sewn on. I have my back piece all sewn on. And so now what I want to do, and I'm going to slide her a little closer, is I want to do one more, I don't want to do a ruffle, but I do want to do something. And so what I decided I would do is I have this tub. It's just random sort of linens and handkerchiefs. And I think what I'll do is cut up some of those into maybe two or three inch pieces and I will line or just kind of go above the top of that lace and I'll come across this, decor this decorative piece here and just come around and up. But I'll lay this out and I'll show you exactly what I do. I have some pieces cut out and my goal here was to make them two to three inches wide 
and just choose some pieces that either had embroidery. There's another one with embroidery. This one has lace. I just wanted each piece to have some sort of interest and not just solid. And so I will sew that. Here's my... I will sew those. I want to stay a little bit above that lace that we already have. And I will sort of follow the design here. And like this one will go, say, down like this. But I don't want it to touch the lace. And then I'll go, not just run it through my machine and just keep... Now, a piece like this is pretty flat. I might kind of pinch pleat that in a couple little areas. I don't want a big ruffle that stands out or poofs out, but I want it to have a little dimension, like I keep saying. And I will just do that all the way around. And I'll just probably use a um, just a smaller straight stitch. Here's what those pieces look sewn on, look like. That's another detail, a little more dimension. Now what I want to do is I went back to this original lace that we started with and I cut a strip that's about six inches tall and I want to put it around the neckline and down the front. And so what I'll do is I'll just start sewing right here at the very bottom of my buttons and then I will just follow that button. There's a um, seam there right next to the buttons. And I will just follow that all the way around, up and over the shoulder. And then when I get to the back, it's curved. Let me tilt this up a little bit. Okay, so the neckline is curved. You don't want to sew that straight across or it won't lay nice. So when you get to the shoulder, just start pinch pleating it a little bit as you sew. And that'll make it drape a lot nicer down the back. And then do that all the way over to the other shoulder. And then you can just sew it straight again. Follow that line. And down the other side. And finish right underneath the buttonholes. And then... I'll need to trim some, but I'd rather have a little extra and trim it than not enough. So I will go to my machine and I'll begin to sew that. Here's the neckline all finished. And now what I want to do is I want to add a, a belt to tie, not even a belt, just like a tie right underneath the chest. So that if I feel like I want more of a fitted look, I can tie that and have this all flowy still and just a little more shape. But having it loose is cool too. So if you don't, if you want to tie and maybe sometimes tie it and sometimes not, you want that loose look, all you have to do is just tie it real loosely behind the back and you can still have a loose look and just another little detail. So. All I do here is I went to my bed sheet, and if you've seen my videos, I use bed sheets all the time because they're 100% cotton. They dye nice with the writ dye. Um, and so I just cut a, they, I rip them actually. You can cut it if you want. And I'm going to look at my measurements. I did two of these 43 inches long by two inches wide. And then I just did a cute little point, you know, cut that at an angle there. And how I'm going to sew this, super simple, because I'm not going to get fancy. I could seam rip this open and put that in there and turn it inside out and re-sew it, but I don't do all that. <laughs> so basically, I'll just make sure this end is nice and straight. And I will set it, 
I marked with a pen. So it's best to put it on and kind of feel out where you would want your ties. So that's what I did and I marked it with a pen. And this will be the top of my tie. So I will, let me pull you closer. So there's my pin, which will be the top of my tie. I will sew it on. I will lay it facing the front and just, you know, put like four rows of stitches in there because you want it nice and secure if you're going to be tugging on it and tying it. And that way, if you sew right here when it's facing forward, when you go to pull it back and tie it, you won't see that seam. And even if you do see that seam, if you decide to let it hang down and flow, so what? We have all kinds of seams on here and rough edges, and that's just kind of the look. So I'm going to go sew these on. Okay, now I have my ties sewn on. But I'm just going to leave them hang for now. Now what I want to do is start working on the arms. And before I add the long sleeves, I'm going to do a little decoration here. And I went to my Quaker Lace tablecloth and cut about a three inch wide strip that would fit all the way around. And this won't be any pleating or anything. This will just be straight sewing it straight to the sleeve just to add another detail and I will just sew it all the way around the arm. I will probably stay about an inch away from the bottom of my sleeve. I'll start sewing at the bottom um, seam here. That's the least conspicuous because it'll end there and overlap. So I hope you can see that. I will just sew this onto my sleeve. Now it's time to make the actual big flared sleeve that I want. So I went back to the sleeve that I cut off because I liked the length so I'll just use that for my measurements. And so I cut off 13 inches. Now I don't want the bell sleeve to be 13 inches wide because I am going to add five inches of lace to the bottom. So I just subtract that third, uh, this five inches from the 13 that I got and that gives me eight inches. And so I need eight inches you would think of the sleeve fabric but I actually am going nine. That way I have plenty of room for overlapping and seam allowance. But um, I'll make that more clear here in a second. So keep it in mind that I want a nine inch wide sleeve because I'm adding five inches of uh, lace. I went to my bed sheet again and I just rip these. I don't really cut. I make a, a notch at the top of the sheet and just rip it. And so this is 53 inches long by nine inches wide and it's all wrinkly but who cares <laughs> all right so that's how i'm starting the sleeve but now i want to decorate it and i'll show you what i do there so eventually this long piece i will be sewing on to the actual sleeve on the nightgown and these will be gathered which will make a flare down here but before I get it on the sleeve, I will decorate it because it's a lot harder once it's sewn on. So I went back to my bed sheet and I cut some strips about an inch wide, the length of the bed sheet. I think I cut three. I don't know how many exactly I'll need till I get going. And now I like to make little ruffles out of these and I will go about halfway and I won't mark it or measure it. I just go to my machine and start sewing. But what I do is I'll lay this into the machine and then I'll just pinch pleat it all as I sew. And that'll give me a ruffle. And I'll do that to both sleeves. It just gives it a little texture, dimension, makes it look, you know, like some 
thought into detail was given to it. So I'll go do that. Okay, now it's time to attach this sheet that we added the ruffle to, to the actual arm of the nightgown, or we're gonna call it a dress now. <laughs> so what I do is I find the inside underneath seam. This is the cut arm of the gown. And I find the underneath seam and I start there because like I always say, it's least conspicuous there. And then what I do is I'll take the end of my sheet, it's going long ways this way, and I will start sewing near that seam about an inch and a half, let's see, an inch and a half in from the end. And I'll show you why that's important. I don't start at the very edge and start sewing. I start about an inch and a half in, and that way, and this I'll show you when I'm done sewing it on, I can connect the two ends and make it look um, finished and connected rather than a weird gap or something. So anyway, start an inch in around that seam, and then what I do is I put my needle in, and then I just do a big pinch pleat this time. I've been doing little ones all along, but this time I want to do a big one. You know, I can't really give you dimensions on how to do that. I think I just pinched an inch on each side here because I really want, the more you pinch pleat it, the larger your pleats are, the more flared this will be. So I'll do a pretty good chunk. So I'll go around and do that all the way around until I get almost to my seam again. And then I'll show you how you connect those and how you finish that off. So I stuck the end of my short little sleeve into my sewing machine and I will overlap this bell sleeve sheet part that we're sewing about a half an inch on to here. And then I'll just sew and do real big pleats. And I'll keep doing that till I get all the way around to where we started. Okay, so I'm almost to the end. Here's the piece I started sewing. I started an inch in, about an inch and a half in. So that's just sitting there. Now I'm almost to the other side. And I want to sew, okay, so this is way too long. I need to cut some off. And I'm just eyeballing it here. I'll cut about right, about right there. And then, okay, so I'll take this end. This is the piece I'm sewing right now. I'll sew it to this piece we started with, this one and a half inches. And I'll sew that at the top and all the way down the sleeve. And then when I get that all sewn, I'll show you what I do, but then I just put it back in my machine and pleat it and go over it and it's done. Okay, so here's my sleeve. Here's the bell that we created. Now I'm just sewing down the side to close that up. And I'm doing wrong sides together because I like seeing that fraying and those seams, but you can do right sides together if you want. Okay, so here's the sleeve. I sewed that side together, but now I still have a gap right here that I have to close up. I will slide this back into my machine. I'll just show you. I'll slide it back into my machine, up to that gap, and here's where I stop stitching. I'm going to put my needle down there, do a little stitch and back stitch, pleat this little open gap, and close it up. Okay. 
So here's what the sleeves are looking like so far. Super cute. Now, I have one final thing to do to the sleeve. Now I just want to sew some lace at the bottom. And I went back to the lace we've been kind of using throughout. And I will sew that. I will lay it about quarter of an inch up, half an inch, whatever makes it easy for me to sew. And now this one has like little chunky flowers. So I may overlap these a little bit because it's kind of stringy in here. And where those strings are, I may bring those together so that they're a little more durable. But, um, yep, this is five inches. I'm just going to sew with a zigzag stitch all the way around. I'm not really sure what length I'll need, but I have a bunch cut. And if it's too short, I can add more. If it's too long, I can trim it. Now here's what the sleeves look like. Beautiful. Now we're gonna work on the ruffle at the bottom. So to make the ruffle at the bottom, I'm going to attach it to the bottom of the dress where we did the high-low where we cut it originally. And I went back to my bed sheet and I want to pleat this ruffle as I sew it. But I don't want to pleat it as much as I did the arms, but a little bit more than normal. So the rule of thumb when you're pleating like a ruffle like this is to measure around the bottom of the dress. And I got 58 inches and you should double that. Well, I more than double it because I don't like to run out. So... I went about, I should be about 120 inches long, but I'm probably more like 150, and I probably won't use all that. It's just two strips of bed sheet. Mine are 14 inches wide. And originally when we measured, I wanted an 18 inch ruffle. Well, I'm going 14 because I think I have enough of this lace we've been using to do a five inch strip down at the bottom. So I went 14 and I will add lace down here. So how I will add my ruffle is just like we did the sleeve. I will start at a side seam and I'll leave about an inch and a half um, loose and not sewn. I'll start about an inch and a half in, go down, and I will make my ruffles, I won't make very big ruffles because I don't want this to be voluminous. I just want it to flare out a little bit. So I'll probably make them, you know, about an inch on this side, an inch on that, maybe go, you know, maybe another couple inches and do that and just kind of play with it all along. So I'll start at the side seam right here and then I'll set this on there start sewing an inch and a half in on this and just pleat it all the way around till I get back to the side seam and do the same thing that we did with the sleeve sew the sides together and then go back in and sew that gap closed okay so here's the bottom of the bed sheet ruffle and I am going to add my approximately five inches of lace to the bottom, just like I did the sleeve. And I will just overlap it about half an inch, and then I'll just pleat it some as I go. Okay, so I have the lace sewn on the bottom. And now what I'm going to do is, do you remember how we sewed that ruffle on the sleeve with the bed sheets? This time I'm using a two inch wide bed sheet and, or bed sheet strip, and I have several strips here. And I wanna sew that about, let's see, four inches above that lace, have the bottom be about four inches above it, but then, when I sew it on, 
I would just will follow that natural line that dips down in the back and I'll just as I sew my needles in here I'll just keep scrunching it underneath the needle as I go and that'll give me a cute ruffle right there so here's that ruffle all sewn on do you remember this layer that we did with all the little em whoops all the little embroidered remnant pieces of my my box of linen well that's what I'm going to do right here and I will probably go you know a good four inches probably above that ruffle I just want to fill in this sort of solidness and here I have some pieces cut up. I used a lot of hankies this time. And some eyelet lay or some eyelet fabric lace. Some embroidered. It has a little bit of color, but when it's all dyed purple, it won't be that noticeable. So I'll just alternate these and go around four inches above that ruffle we just did. Okay. We're all done sewing. Now, I want to dye it purple. So I'm going to dye it purple, and I'm going to be using Rit Dye. And if you're not from, this one just says purple. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with it, um, you can either dye clothes in your washer or I've seen a lot of people do it in like buckets and things on the stove there are directions on here for several different ways but for me the easiest is to put it in the washer and a lot of people say well doesn't that ruin your next batch of clothes what I do is after I dye something I will do an empty load with laundry detergent and hot water and everything and that cleans my washer but I probably wouldn't do a load of whites after that. I would probably do a load of darks. And I've never had a problem. Um, the more you use, the darker it gets. And I don't want this super dark. So I may just use like a third, between a third and a half maybe of this. And how I do it is I go to my wash machine and I pour in however much of this I want and a cup of salt. And all the directions are on here. And then I let my washer um, fill up with water for five minutes before I put my garment in. So I pour this in, salt, let it fill up for five minutes, and then I'll put my dress in. And when I'm all done, I'll put it in the dryer. You can line dry it, but it I feel like the dryer heat sets this so that when you go to wash it again, the dye doesn't fade. Um, you can always dry clean it too. So I'm going to dye it and dry it. And when I pull it out of the dryer, it will be a tangly mess. There will be raw edges and loose threads. I'll have to clean that all up and just take my time. And then I'll come back and talk to you more about it. Okay, one more quick kind of important note about Rit Dye. This is for um, natural fabrics, cotton, linen, silk, wool, things like that. And that's why I try to always use 100% cotton. Now they do have a writ dye that is for synthetics. I've never tried it. This just works so good for me. I don't know. I don't want to risk spending this much time on something and experimenting at this point. Maybe someday I will. So if you're going to use, just be careful of the writ dye you buy. If your fabrics aren't 100% um, natural, like cotton, silk, linen, things like that, buy the other writ dye that is for synthetic fabrics or just try to stay natural in your fabrics. So here it is again. So if you are going to try to do something like this, please just have fun with it. It's a pretty forgiving sort of look. If you don't like something, cut it off. If you want more, add it on. It's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching.